Hello everyone and welcome to lesson 16 of Objective C on the Mac. In this tutorial, I'm going to be covering memory management in Objective C. So memory management is hugely important in uh, the development process. Um, it's what allows you to get rid of any objects you create. And uh, it's, ju it's just essential to know uh, if you're working with any iOS devices, so if you're working for iPod with iPods or iPads, you got to know this stuff. So um, how does this work? Um, basically, we don't have to be worried about integers or doubles. Um, those are out of the question. All we're really looking at is objects. So what do we talk? What do we mean when we're saying memory management? Well, when we create a new object, um, I'm just going to run through that normal process here. We create a new project, or not project, new. Um, Geez, new object, and I don't know where I got project from. We create a new object, and then we call usually alloc in it, or we just do another method uh, like string with string for the NS string class. Um, but usually, when we create um, our methods or our new objects, we usually call alloc, and that's what we've been calling all along. Now the important part to know about alloc though is it creates this object that sticks around in memory until we tell it to go. And that's the important part that we have to know. Every time you create an object with alloc, a little alarm bell should go off in your head saying, we got to get rid of this object somewhere. I don't know where, but we're going to have to get rid of it somewhere. And that's um, just a good warning. So every time you see alloc, that should go off your, in your head. So how do we work with this? Well, we have some handy dandy pictures to help us out and hopefully that will help you tremendously. So here I've created two different pictures, but we're going to focus on the first one here to start. And this one's just called the life of an object. And it's just a quick little doodle thing that I made in pages pretty quickly. And uh, it just outlines the main things that happen when we create an object. So um, if objects are created with alloc, copy, or new, new is just a keyword that's kind of like copy and in it together. Uh, we don't use it though, it's um, not as useful. And copy is used quite a bit to just copy objects, uh, as the name would imply, but uh, we haven't learned it yet, so don't be too concerned. Um, all you have, really have to worry about right now is alloc. But just remember, keep in the back of your head that anytime you use alloc, copy, or new, those are your things that you have to sound off, sound off an alarm bell in your head saying, hello, we have uh, something we have to get rid of later on in our program. So what happens when we use um, one of those methods? Well, we have what's known as a retain count of one. So every object that you create is going to have what's known as a retain count. And a retain count is simply just a number system that um, when an object has a retain count of zero, that object gets uh, trashed or deallocated in uh, Objective-C terms. But that just means that if the retain count hits zero, that object is going to be destroyed and trashed. So that's usually good if we want to get rid of it, obviously. So that's how the retain count system works. So what happens when we create this object? Well, we create our rectangle object, alloc and init, and what happens in um, little picture terms here? This is uh, this object here starts with a retain count of one, which is what our rectangle object down here starts with. So a rectangle object that we just created is equal to this object, and this object has a retain count of 1. So again, every time you create a new object with alloc, copy, or new, um, or actually any object you create is going to have a retain count of 1 to start, but these, uh, these three terms are what symbolize that you have to get rid of it somehow. So again, the object starts with a retain count of 1, and somehow we're going to have to get rid this uh, retain count to 0, because 0 is what will deallocate this object. So we, we send it what's known as the release message, and that message will uh, basically bring down your retain count by one, and if it hits zero, then the object is going to be uh, deallocated or thrown in the trash. So that's basically your essential guide to uh, memory management. Um, again, this just outlines the three methods that you have to be worried about, and uh, these three methods you have to get rid of the object that you create with those methods. Now, the important message calls or method calls uh, that we have to be concerned about are retain, which is which will add to your retain count. So if we want to keep this um, object around, and um, if we want to put its retain count to 2, then we 
we would call the retain uh, method or message, send a message of retain. So if we sent it a message of release, then that object will now uh, subtract its retain count by one. And now its retain count, whatever it is, will go down by one. So when the objects are first created, uh, of course they will go down and they will go to zero. So um, the retain count method uh, will just return the um, retain count that an object has. So we'll talk about auto release later, and it's uh, a very great and nifty thing to have later. But the important ones we're going to focus on today are just these first three, and more importantly, the first two though are the ones that actually do the important work. So again, retain will increment your retain count by one, and release will decrement your retain count by one. So one adds one, and the other uh, minuses one. So let's go back to our program here, and we want to do uh, something to our rectangle class, though, to know when uh, the dialloc method is called, because every object has a dialloc method, and when it hits a retain count of zero, that dialloc method, dialloc method, will be called. So um, let's just override NS objects dialloc method so that we can print out a message when we uh, see it. So uh, dialloc, we're just going to override it. This is in our rectangle class. Again, dialloc is a method of NS object, so we're going to have to call uh, super dialloc, which is um, uh, NS objects dialloc, which does all the work for us. So uh, super dialloc is always something you're going to have to put in there if you're overriding it, but usually we don't have to override it. This is just to show uh, that we're going to print out a message when we call our dialloc. So now, uh, the whole point of doing this, NS log, and we're going to say the object is gone. So all that means is that uh, the object is now destroyed. And so right before uh, the object gets destroyed, it's going to print out this message, and then we're going to call NSObjectsDialloc so it can um, basically get rid of the object that we have. Because again, by overriding this dialloc method, we aren't actually doing the work behind the scenes. NSObjectsDialloc method is doing all the work. So we have to call SuperDialloc so it does the work for us. Uh, that's o that's always an important thing, and it will uh, complain if you don't have that in there. So uh, let's go back now that we've done that, and now we can see all that was for us to see when our object is uh, deallocated. So now we're just going to do a few things here, and one is uh, printing out our rectangle. And I copy and pasted this earlier because I it we uh, write it so many times. But all this is doing is printing out your object, and we're going to have another. Um, we're going to have another thing here that just um, will print out the retain count of your um, rectangle object. So um, let's just do an, another NS log to start us out. And this NS log is going to print out an integer. And it's going to be the rectangle's retain count. And retain count just again returns the retain count of the object. So let's see what happens when we run this as it is. And builds and blah blah blah, and now you can see this is just printing out the object, and that's uh, the description method. And then here is just the retain count of our object. So now let's send this object a retain count, which will, or not retain count, let's send it the message retain, so that it will increment its um, retain count. So we're going to say rect and retain, and not retain count, just retain. And now we're just going to print this out again. So copy and paste this, and let's see this in action. And now you can see we have a retain count of two. So that means our object now has a retain count of two because we called the retain method, or we called, we sent it, the retain message. And now, um, but our whole idea here is to get rid of the memory. Um, Adding these retains in here is just for fun to show you how retain count uh, works and how uh, retain counting works in general. So uh, let's call another thing here, and uh, we're going to call uh, rect, and this one's going to be our release method. And again, release is going to decrement our retain count. So now our retain count will go down to 1. So let's see this in action. As you can see, our retain count is returned to 1. And again, if we get to zero, that's when our dialloc method is going to be called and the object will get destroyed. So uh, let's do one more call here. And what we're going to do, or um, 
we're not going to call this. We're, all we're going to do this time is call rect, and we're going to call release. And what happens when we do this? Well, when we call the release now, it's going to hit a retain count of 0, because previously we had a retain count of 1 at the end. So now calling this release method is going to bring the retain count down to 0. And when that happens, the dialloc method is called, and since we overrode uh, the dialloc method in our rectangle class, it's going to print out that message saying, hey, the object is gone. And then it's going to deallocate the uh, object. So let's go ahead and build in on this, and let's check out what happens. So as you can see, we hit the retain count of 1 like before, and then we called this re uh, release method. Now you can see that message that we put in our dialloc is called because, again, when we hit a retain count of 0, that object gets called the, the dialloc method, and the dialloc method will destroy the object, or deallocate the object, and since we put that little message in there, we can see that the dialloc was called because it prints out the object is gone. So uh, let's simplify this, though, just to show, uh, that just shows how all the methods work. But in general, what are we going to want to do? Well, all we really want to do is have rect and release. And so all the, the whole point of this is just to show that if you call alloc, you're going to have to call the release method somewhere in there to get rid of your object. So now let's build and run this. And as you can see, the object is gone. So that's all we had to do uh, for memory management. Essentially, your objects that you create with alloc, copy, or new uh, will start with a retain count of 1. And then, to get rid of them, all you have to call is the release method, which will bring its memory down, or its retain count, down to 0. And then the dialloc method is called, and the object is destroyed. So that's just uh, your brief overview of memory management, and we'll get into a whole slew of other things in the upcoming tutorials, and that auto-release that you saw earlier, we'll also be talking about that, and we'll be talking about different methods that don't use the alloc method, and what happens to those. So anyway, uh, stick, me, stick with me for all the upcoming tutorials. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments, or send me a message, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.